The Confession, which is the new show with uh, Kiefer Sutherland, which is airing on Hulu Premium, is being branded on Facebook, probably, I'm thinking maybe by your promotional team, Correct. as being a TV show. It's also listed in IMDb as a TV show. Why, the decision to go with that is what? What's up with that is, yeah. I mean, the whole idea here is, you know, we're proving that, uh, you know, a talent, a script, a production values can originate online and be solely online. Convergence is here in the 21st century with an incredibly empowered consumer. You know, we've got kids nowadays that are doing what we call cutting the cord, and they've got their Hulu accounts, they've got their Netflix accounts, and effectively, you know, they're, they're, they don't tune into programming anymore. It's all video on demand. So with this project, I think we're proving that, you know, we, are, we live in a converged world, and it's no longer about tuning into a TV show. It's about video on demand for an empowered consumer that they pick when they want to, you know, consume programming. But you think the consumer is still calling it a TV show? Yeah, kind of, you know, how somebody says, can I have a Kleenex when they're yeah. talking about a, a, a tissue. But that'll, that'll, that'll probably go by the wayside, but it's, it's an exciting time. When you talk about convergence being here, I know a lot of the community involved in the um, advertising side is, doesn't yet see the TV dollars. What needs to happen to bring more of that to the digital video space, particularly original digital video? Uh, it's a good question. I mean, from DBG's perspective, we are producing and distributing video. We produce it and then we distribute it across the, the DBG content syndication network. Um, so, you know, last year we did 21 different brand sponsored web programs working with Sprint, Mars, Ford, uh, you know, tons, Unilever, Kimberly Clark, the U.S. Air Force, lots of brands are stepping up and doing this. I think, you know, in terms of are we tapping into TV budgets, probably to a certain extent, uh, you know, it's not just digital budgets, but when we're creating and distributing programming of, you know, the likes and the quality of the confession, it's a great way to get the attention of, you know, a traditional TV buyer. It's something they understand. Do you think the future is more in pre-roll and you know pre-recorded 30 second spots or in you know advertisers as, as content creators i think you know advertisers as content create you know creators in terms of creating webisodic content i think effectively is the new pre-roll if you will it's another ad format that we're going to ask the iab to help us figure out standards <laughs> around but you know i i mentioned uh uh earlier that you know if you think about uh, you know, online advertising, you've got search at the bottom of the pyramid, you've got display advertising, you've got rich media advertising, you've got pre-roll advertising, and at the apex of this triangle, you've got the webisode. It's kind of, you know, this new, the new rich media, if you will, and I think it's really important, you know, tool for advertisers, it's a great complement to a 30-second TV spot because we have an em empowered consumer and effectively, we, you know, brands and media companies to really truly assist brands need to, you know, help these brands figure out better ways to connect with an extremely empowered consumer that can switch you on and off like that if you're a brand. And 30 second spots to somebody like you and me is a very hard way to get our attention. And when you're creating a web show that involves a brand utility, but at the same time it entertains me, you're, gonna, you're much more apt to get my attention. And if you look at the research and analytics that DBG does, comparing pre-roll advertising with longer form webisodic programming, the numbers don't lie in terms of percent of video viewed, engagement, time spent you know, with the program. Uh, you know, the metrics are through the roof and it's no accident. When you s use the term webisodic program, I'm immediately thinking short form. And I know that the confession is nine minutes-ish. Episodes range from, I think, about six to nine six minutes. Six to nine? Yeah. What, I mean, in, well, Kevin's show, I was talking to him, can last two hours. Sure. So yeah. <laughs> He's got some real talkers on yeah. his show. <laughs> what is the, 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 the model here? I've got a few distribution question models. What is, sure. what is the model in terms of the time length and, and what, 
creates that? Is it, is it budget? Is it what the users are wanting in terms of commitment of time? Yeah. What, what is creating it? Um, it's an interesting question. I think traditionally online, people have gravitated towards a webisode being three to five minutes. And I think the reason we did that is it was this notion of snackable content. Where are consumers consuming a web show? Traditionally, it was in their office cube you know, during lunch. So it needed to be hence, or during snack time, it needed to be snackable, needed to be short. Now, with what we were talking about earlier, with this notion of convergence and the digital living room with Netflix offering you know, their, their streaming platform uh, last year, with you know, the advent of, the, of, of tablets and the iPad, you know, with Blu-rays and connected TVs, so I've got Cinema Now, I've got YouTube, I've got all these things accessible, you now have a digital living room. So you're not just consuming in your office cube. So this notion of three to five minute content isn't that necessary anymore. So literally, you know, the models have converged. Just the way we saw, and I'll get a little, little crazy here in my analogy, uh, you know, but my mother is an art historian, so she's, you know, taught me a lot about art history. And one of those, you know, things was the Cubist movement in taking, you know, effectively a, you know, a, a landscape, a three-dimensional landscape, and collapsing that with Cubism and what Picasso did by collapsing it. And, you know, effectively, that's what we're doing here with con convergence. We've taken you know, this representa representational landscape, and we've completely collapsed it and, and, and now have this digital living room. So length is really just a function of storytelling. It's really, you know, exactly what we saw on the TV medium, what we've got online. If anything, what we're hearing about with, with commentary uh, on, on Hulu and across the, the social graph that we've created for, for the confession is, this is too short, I want more content. Uh, and that is a really good feeling that, wow, you know, convergence is upon us and, and it's all about the storytelling. And that's what, what Kiefer has is, is, is always said, you know, we're storytellers and people trust in us to tell a good story. Two, two more, you know, questions about the distribution model. One is, I, I read in the New York Times that the first two episodes came out at 5 a.m. Yes. That's not prime time. <laughs> That was, that was uh, uh, on Hulu's advice. Uh, most of their new programming gets tuned in at, 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 uh, at 5 a.m. Uh, you know, on, on their uh, release dates. So, and, and last Monday when we went live, when we premiered, we premiered with the first three episodes. Yeah. Uh, we thought they went well together uh, to do a big splashy uh, uh, premiere and, and to get people involved. Our program was the number sixth most popular show on Hulu last Monday and Tuesday and was the number one action program. So beating out a lot of the network shows, which, which was really Congratulations. exciting. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. And, and the, the good folks over at Hulu uh, you know, were saying, wow, you should, be, you know, you should really be, be patting yourselves on the back. So we're, we're really excited. But it, it certainly was a team effort. A lot of work went into it. Kiefer, John Hurt. Brad Merman, Moore Mant over at, at uh, Maggie Vision, Dave Chamberlain. I mean, we've just had a, a phenomenal team of people that have, have, have just been, been, been so engaged and so passionate uh, about the project. So it's, it's really, you know, it's, 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 you know, I think the work speaks for itself. It was also on Hulu Premium, not Hulu the, Plus. Hulu and Plus. And plain I'm vanilla sorry. Hulu. So mm. it's available, you just go to hulu.com forward slash the dash confession. How's that for a plug? <laughs> um, but you know, it's there. It's also promoted on their homepage in the masthead. But there's also Hulu Plus, which is a subscription based service. Mm. So if you want to watch it on your iPad or on your mobile phone, you watch it through the Hulu Plus platform. Netflix is also getting in the game. They announced the Kevin Spacey yeah. deal. Do you foresee much of the Hollywood? digital only content co going through almost major networks online? You know, I think it's, uh, it's, it's interesting as we move forward, a lot of programming is running, you know, not only are we running on Hulu, we're also running across select sites on the DVG video network, 
through Hulu Plus, you can watch this on your iPhone or you know through your iPad. Once we finish the first run, we'll be taking a feature length version, or I shouldn't say that, take it back. We're taking a, a serialized version of the entire show. I think it runs about 70 minutes, and we'll be rolling that out. So we're, we're, we're doing a lot of different things to have as many multiple touch points rolling this out internationally so that everybody around the world can, can, can enjoy the confession and the program. So there are a lot of different things we're doing in terms of hitting multiple distribution points.